It has been suggested that now that we leave the age of oil behind us, we are starting the so-called Green Stone Age. That's because for so many things in our daily lives, we are dependent on rare metals and other elements that we extract from rocks. My name is Arjan Dijkstra and I'm a geologist. And I try to find the rocks from which we can get the materials for the energy transition. And what better example than lithium, the element needed for lithium batteries, for your phone, your computer, and for electric vehicles. So I've collected a bit of lithium-rich rock from Southwest England. And I want to find out what we need to do to turn this bit of rock into a battery by doing some simple experiments with inexpensive materials. Today, I'm going to do an experiment to get the lithium-bearing mineral out of this rock by a process called froth flotation. When we think about this battery, this is a lithium-ion battery from a Tesla. There's about 7,000 of these in a, in a Model S Tesla. Um, where does that lithium come from? Well, it comes from rock. Um, rocks like these. This particular rock contains about half a percent, maybe up to a percent by weight lithium. But the lithium within this rock is in a very particular mineral. In this case, it is in a mica, lithium mica, called lipidolite. But this rock also contains other minerals like quartz and feldspar that do not contain any lithium. So, if we want to get the lithium out of this rock, the first thing that would be very useful is to get rid of the minerals that do not contain lithium. So get rid of the quartz and the feldspars uh, so that we're only left with these lithium micas and we can do some chemistry on them to get the lithium out of these, these micas. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is grind up this rock so that all the minerals will be pulled apart from each other, they will be liberated, so that all these micas will be on their own, they won't be attached to quartz and feldspar. We're going to use the property of the micas that they are water-hating. Now we can enhance that water-hating property of these micas with some chemicals. So we're going to use some chemicals here to enhance that property of the micas that allows us to separate them from the quartz and the feldspar, which are not really particularly water-hating. I'm going to add a spoon of powdered up lithium bearing rock. Add some water here. So I'm going to switch on the magnetic stirrer here. And I'm going to add a little bit of acid, just to, in this case, a little bit of very dilute sulfuric acid. Okay, so that's our first step. But now I'm going to uh, mix up my, my very special chemicals that make this whole experiment work. The first of my two ingredients here is mineral water. It's a sparkly mineral water, so it has bubbles in there. I want bubbles. The bubbles are going to be very important. I'm going to add a very special chemical here to make these mica super water heating. Very magical super expensive chemical. Actually, I'm joking, because the chemical I'm adding here is ordinary fabric softener. Now, they do this process in mineral processing plants at mines, and they don't use fabric softener, but they use a chemical that's very similar to fabric softener. But I just use fabric softener because I could buy that in my local supermarket, and it is super cheap. So, this is my magical liquid that's going to do the work. So I'm going to put my rock powder with the magnetic stirrer on the plate and we're going to add our special chemical here. So what's happening? Well, all the minerals are being stirred nicely. Um, the fabric softener is attaching itself to these micas and making them super water-hating. But that's not enough for them 
to go to the surface. They want to get out of the water to the surface. They want to escape the water, but of course gravity is pulling them down. But I've used mineral water here. So it has bubbles inside. And of course, where there is a bubble, there is no water. So these micas will have a tendency to attach themselves to these tiny bubbles in my sparkling mineral water. And the bubbles will go to the surface, of course. So the bubbles will carry these micas to the surface. And they will all accumulate in this really dirty looking froth. And the quartz in the feldspar, if this works, will all stay within this bit of water or will stay at the bottom here. So I'm going to leave that to, to stir for a bit so to give all the micas a chance to attach themselves to these bubbles and, and sort of be pulled up to the surface. And then we just can scoop off this dirty looking froth and that's where the micas will be sitting. They will be in the froth. It's not a clean looking froth, it's actually a little bit pinkish, the froth. Um, and that's because these micas are a little bit pink. So let me just switch this off and see whether the liquid in between the froth and the, uh, and the stuff at the bottom actually clears. Well, the, the liquid in between is clearing quite nicely, so the idea is quartz and feldspar sink to the bottom now. If they weren't there already, and the micas will be in this froth. So I can just scoop off the froth, or I'm actually going to use my pipette. So let me just remove some of this froth. So we can sort of rinse and wash what's in the, uh, the filter paper here. And if everything worked, that is pure mica. Well, this is what it looks like when I've washed and dried the stuff that's in the filter paper. And I've checked this under the microscope and it is nearly 100% lithium-bearing mica. So that's a really good result, really chopped.